The originator of the emotion mapping tool, Kirsten Kammermeyer, joined Bridges Curriculum Specialist Aaron Orr to talk about the different ways that emotion mapping was being used by Bridges teaching artists and classroom teachers to deepen their students' understanding of story. A lot of the time when we go in and do theater residencies, the teachers express a sort of amazement at how well the students remember the sequence of the story and the details of the story. And I feel like uh, this chart can really be used as a tool for having uh, students ask themselves the kinds of questions that they need to ask along the way, along the way of learning a story in order to really understand why the things in the story happen when they happen. That a story sequence isn't just first, then, next, last. Mm -hmm. Each thing that happens in the story happens because somebody did something and that made somebody feel a certain way and so they went and did this other thing. The whole story is a sequence of tactics and motives and um, causes and effects. And the key to really getting kids to understand that and remember it is to make sure that they are making a personal connection to it. Mm -hmm. That every time something happens to a character, they're given a moment to reflect on how they would feel if that happened to them, and maybe a moment to put it into their body. Um, Rima Fand and her partner teacher, teachers did an amazing job of uh, using the chart as a way when the kids were retelling a folk tale to have them stop physicalize how characters were feeling, think of words to describe that feeling, talk about where that feeling went on the chart. Um, so it isn't just that Rima's getting up there and performing in this amazing way and she's making all of these incredible uh, choices as an actor, as a clown, as an mm. entertainer. That's not why the kids are remembering what happens in the story and why the characters are doing what they're doing. They're remembering it because they have integrated it with the vocabulary with what they how they would express that vocabulary with their body what that would sound like in their voice mm -hmm. um, with their own ideas about how they would feel in those situations yeah. but I did notice that in some some classes it 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 got away from just emotion words there were character traits like evil <laughs> you know or um, you know really you don't but do you feel evil? It's, 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 well, that's the yeah. thing. Yeah, that's that's something that's shown, but isn't necessarily felt. Maybe there's a weird. I mean, this is this is this is a story. What? Why? Why? Jealous and angry. Yeah. Why? Jealous, yeah. Angry, How is he feeling? Fear? That makes him be so be so evil in his actions. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like a it's a good conversation starter. And if we talk about, you can bring in villains. So let's look at this villain. Let's look at Cruella Deville. You know. Probably a once beauty is now getting older, and she she's just terrified. And oh my god, terrified, so of, terrified of losing who she was, you know. And so she's trying to grasp at anything to make her feel special. Right. Um, and we, yeah, I mean, now I not to de-villainize all the villains, but like, I love that. <laughs> but to but to have that empathy because it's so easy to go. Oh, they're just evil. They're just evil. No, actually, and I run into problems with that. She's yeah. she's so insecure. Oh, all oh, so insecure, so terrible. I run into problems with that. Having when I'm having kids create their own stories for puppet shows, you're know, like, my character's evil and he kills everybody, and oh, I'm wow. like, but by the end, if he's just evil and he never changes and we never learn anything about why he's doing what he's doing, the only solution for our story is that he gets defeated by the good guys. I mean, you don't want your character to die because sometimes they don't. Oh, yeah. you're going to have to figure out how can they transform, how could they express their needs in a less evil way <laughs> you know um you just wanted a friend oh oh you're lonely yeah right exactly so <laughs> that character this goes up a little bit because they was making it him... was big enough for him to be evil over yeah. it. right i know that some of the second grade teachers kept it up all year at 229 and the miss blisco talked about She'd given them a writing assignment, and she was. They were all supposed to be working quietly, and she did something at her desk and looked up, and there was a big group of them all huddled in the corner. And she said, like, "What are you doing?" And they're like, "We're we're looking for words." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was, I was gonna say you put it by the word wall. Yeah. Put it by the word. Just having it be an extension. 